There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, the word in the beginning, one with God the Lord most high, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. 
Who could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Good morning and welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here. We're excited that you're here with us. Uh, we hope and pray that this is a powerful worship experience for you. I want to welcome you. My name is Ethan Carnes. I'm the directing pastor here at University United Methodist Church. Here at University, our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ by reaching, teaching, and serving Peoria. We are so grateful that you are a part of that mission and that vision with us. Whether you're in person with us, we wanna welcome you, or whether you're worshiping with us online, uh, we wanna welcome you as a part of our community. We hope that you'll stay connected to us through social media, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, we hope that you will share this uh, worship service with a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a loved one, uh, somebody who needs to hear the word today in your life, especially a word of unity today as we look at what it means to be a, a church in unity in the midst of a world that is full of so much, uh, so much uh, di divergence and, and so much hatred and so much anger and evil and so much angst and, and instability. Uh, we hope that you'll also take a moment today to uh, fill out your pledge cards for Peace with Justice Sunday. This is a special Sunday in the life of the church where we're able to give to uh, United Methodist Missions for Peace with Justice. These are social justice ministries. There's a handout in your bulletin where you can learn more, where you can give into your offering envelope. We're about to go into our offering in just a, a second, but before we go there, I want to announce that uh, beginning in July, we're gonna be moving to one service uh, as one body, uh, one church, and uh, that will be at 10 o'clock, and we're gonna be moving to that at uh, in July and the first Sunday in July and so we hope that you will uh, come out for that that's going to be a blended service that's going to come together as we worship God uh, as uh, one uh, in one service together I want to invite you to pray with me as we move into worship together together today let us pray God, we ask that you come into this place and space we thank you so much for your love and grace at work in our lives Today, God, is Pentecost Sunday, the Sunday in which your Holy Spirit came upon the people of Pentecost Day. 
a day that we hope will come again sooner than later. A day of passion and fire, a day of spirit and spirit-filled worship and conversation and discernment and discussion. We pray for that in our lives today. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come and fall afresh on us as we worship you, God, here and now. We ask a blessing on these gifts, God, as we prepare our hearts to give, that you would be a blessing to us and that you would bless us as we give with our whole hearts, especially to Peace with Justice Sunday, as we go to right the wrongs of evils in the world, uh, everything from gender issues to uh, issues uh, of sexuality to immigration, whatever it might be, we pray that we would be able to be healers and peacemakers in the world. So we ask a blessing on these gifts as we prepare ourselves for this time together. Amen. At this time, I want to invite the ushers to receive our offering today as we prepare ourselves for this Peace with Justice Sunday offering. As we prepare ourselves for the offering, I want to invite you to check out what's happening in the life of the church as we see what's happening in the news. Let's watch. Good morning, I'm James Newland, and welcome to UUMC News, where we put you in the news. Welcome to all the folks here with us live, and welcome to our viewers online. Thank you for joining us on the first day of Pentecost. Our mission here at university is to make disciples of Jesus Christ by reaching, teaching, and serving Peoria. If you're here with us in person, please fill out the red pew pad at the end of your pew. And if you're new here, please fill out the connect card in your bulletin and put it in the offering plate. Remember to bring your friends to our Holy Grounds Cafe for coffee, good food, and fellowship every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. in the dining hall. And don't forget about Children's Church at 10 a.m. as well. Today, Pastor Ethan will begin his three-week sermon series entitled, Uncomfortable. Uncovering how the challenges of faith, love, and the church can be so hard and awkward. Uh -huh. Today is Peace with Justice Sunday. Donations for this special Sunday support programs and ministries to educate, equip, and mobilize actions in support of identified economic, health, and gender justice priorities. So be sure to take a moment to think about your donations this Sunday. And also, please consider how you can give financially to University United Methodist Church. Along with tithing and giving weekly or monthly, there are a variety of ways to give through estates, investments, and more. Consider a legacy gift and pick up a brochure in the lobby today. Foster Village is almost ready to open to serve foster children and families. Take a peek into Cartwright Hall to see many changes. You can donate and learn more about Foster Village at the address on your screen. Still want to do more? Well, plug into a small group and grow in to ministry with each other. Here's the schedule on your screen right now. And here are more upcoming events at UUMC. May God bless all the efforts and activities, and here's to a great summer. And remember to join us for VBS this year, July 11th through the 14th at 9.30 to noon. If you wish to volunteer, come find me and let me know. And if you wish to sign up your kid, grandkid, neighborhood kid that you want to get involved, you can do so on the website on your screen. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what 
what we don't deserve And you take the broken things And raise them to glory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it Teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease This is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly Undefeated by the power of your name, I am seated in the heavenly place. Undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. I want to invite you to hear with me the scripture reading for today. The scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 12, verses uh, 25. I'll be reading from the message paraphrase. You're welcome to follow along with whatever translation uh, works for you, whatever translation is comfortable. We're going to look at uh, 24 and 25 on the screen, but for the sermon, uh, we're going to go deeper into 25. But I want to invite you to hear these words. Let them uh, lay on your heart as we hear them together. Listen carefully, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real, and eternal. Would you pray with me? Forever real and eternal, God, we ask that you come into this place in a reckless way, that your reckless love would uh, be so steadfast, so powerful, so wonderful, so miraculous, that we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be good and acceptable, Christ, to your sight, our rock, Jesus, our Redeemer. We ask this in your name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to think about what is your dream church? What is your absolute dream church? Is it a church that is 
packed full of people? Is it a church that's uh, full of empty seats? Is it a church that's full of people who look just like you? Is it a church that has no uh, financial issues, no building problems? Is it a church where everyone is progressive or conservative? Is it a church that does contemporary music or traditional music? What is your, what is your perfect church? What is your dream church? Take a moment to really think about that. If you could build your ideal church, what would it look like? We all have one, and there's a good chance that the church that you're in now, University United Methodist Church, doesn't check all the boxes on the list that you want of what it would take to make it the dream church for you to have. But the focus in this three-week series, Uncomfortable, is about unpacking all of that. It's about what are we to make of the fact that following Jesus often leads us into uncomfortable and awkward situations? What does the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus tell us about embracing the challenge of living in Christian community? The reality is, is that no church is perfect. Every church has imperfections because it's filled with imperfect people. I don't know if you need to hear that today, friends, but you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I like to think that I'm perfect 99% of the time, but we're not perfect. The truth is that University United Methodist Church isn't your ideal church because if I asked each of you what your ideal church would be, it wouldn't be what you have now, probably, and each of you would have something different. Every single one of you has a different thing that you would lift up. I don't know if you need to hear that today, but no where you go, nowhere you go is going to be perfect. But we live in a culture that lives in a have it your way mentality, in a have it your way culture. And the problem is that the culture of consumption has crept its way into the church and we just call it things like preferences instead of things like consumption. But preferences like, I prefer traditional music over contemporary music. Preferences like, I prefer this age group over that age group. Preferences like, I prefer prefer this pastor over that pastor. Preferences like, I prefer to have a male pastor over a female pastor. Or a white pastor over a black pastor. Preferences Like, I'd rather have a straight pastor over a gay pastor. You see, our preferences can become dangerous when we go too far. And no church is the ideal church. But when we try and build the ideal church, when we start church shopping, when we start going from place to place, trying to find what the ideal place is, what we'll we'll find out is that we will be poorly, 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 very poorly, friends, let me emphasize, poorly mistaken, that we're not going to get what we want, that it's just not going to be what we want to be, but we have to settle for what the kingdom of God wants us to have, not what we prefer it to be. Preferences like X, Y, and Z, like that we like, but then we have preferences that we don't like, like X, Y, and Z. And we live in a world that seems to think that can bend and break people to your will. We live in a world that thinks that people are somehow disposable. That if you don't get along, then you're the one that's wrong. Not me, and I don't have to change, and I don't have to do life with you anymore. That's our political and cultural worldview right now. Life and people are cheap, easily disposed of, and easily able to be written off. But in the church, it's different. All people are of value. Every person is of sacred worth. No person is written off because every person's name is written into the book of life. The purpose of Christianity causes us to be a little awkward in this world because as Christians, our life and purpose is not the American dream. Let me repeat that again, just in case you need to hear it again. But our purpose in this life is not to gain the American dream as Christians. Author Chris McCracken writes this, Following Christ is not one's golden ticket to a white picket fence American dream. 
It's an invitation to die, to pick up the cross. Similarly, C.S. Lewis writes this, I didn't go to religion to make me happy. I always knew a bottle of port would do that. If you want a religion to make you really comfortable, I certainly don't recommend Christianity. What McCracken and Lewis are both getting at is that it's easy to find basic happiness and comfort, but living the Christian life and being a part of a church community requires making sacrifices that will be uncomfortable. Ultimately, this uncomfortable state will lead us to become more like Jesus. It's a trade-off that's always worth it. So are you willing to live an uncomfortable faith that bears the uncomfortable cross? Are you willing to live an uncomfortable faith that bears an uncomfortable cross? So how has your faith made your life uncomfortable lately? Maybe you found that you had to bite your tongue when you were in a meeting with somebody or doing something with someone. Maybe you found that you felt a little uncomfortable because there was gossip taking place and you weren't comfortable engaging in that gossip. Maybe you felt uncomfortable because, uh, because people have habits and, and, and mindsets and addictions that don't agree with you and your Christianity. And what is it that makes it so awkward and uncomfortable? for you and your faith to get out of your comfort zone. The scripture for today is short, but it says a lot. And there's no rule to saying that you have to preach a big long piece of scripture or translation, specifically one or another. But what we have here is a gem of scripture in the later verse. And I wanna read it as it says, in the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, Reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. Friends, the scripture paints a perfectly clear picture that you can't hold on to this life as it is because Jesus has something more in store for you. We have to die to ourselves and live a faith that finds forever, that finds real, that finds eternal and everlasting, real, eternal, and everlasting. This faith, this kind of faith that I'm talking about is grounded in reckless love of God for God and one another. Jesus, after all, said, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And the key Greek word there is love. It's agape. It's reckless, unbounding, unabiding, unconditional. And that's awkward because it causes a faith that looks like loving those who, some, who someone might be asking you to hate. Let me pause there and invite you to think about, is there someone in your life who you absolutely dislike? Someone who you just can't stand, get along with, someone who you even look down upon, who frustrates you to no end, whatsoever, maybe it's your coworker, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your family member, maybe it's the person sitting right next to you in this room, I don't know. But who is it that frustrates you to no end, who you just absolutely can't stand, who maybe even you hate? Well, the news of the scripture today is that you are called to agape love them, that you are called to agape love love them. It might be hard to love somebody that the world is asking you to hate, especially if it's a person of a different skin color, culture, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, gender, sexual orientation, and the list goes on. But the hymn says, they will know that we are Christians by our love, by our love and that we are called to love all people. Agape love all people. No matter where they come from, no matter what they look like, no matter how much they've ticked you off, no matter how much they've betrayed you, no matter how much they have hurt you or harmed you, that doesn't mean that you can't have boundaries, that doesn't mean that you can't keep them at a distance, but it does mean that you have to agape love them just as God loves them too. So who are you struggling to love 
today. Better yet, let me ask you this. How can you be a little bit more reckless and awkward in your faith? How can you be a little bit more reckless and awkward in your faith? You see, we grow by leaving our comfort zones and entering into the challenges and discomforts of our faith. Instead of avoiding this truth, we need to embrace it and, and press into the joy of dying to ourselves and living for God and loving neighbor. So are you willing to lay aside your dream church and your dream life, your consumer fantasies, and accept the hard stomach truths and awkward requirements of locking arms with weird people in common pursuit of Jesus Christ? You see, we're all in pursuit of Jesus Christ. But are you willing to embrace persecution? Let go of your desires, let go of your dreams, let go of your comforts in order for the body of Christ to grow. As Christians, we live for the body, not one part, after all. Corinthians 12 says this, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. In other words, we don't have one body part that's above the other. We don't put one person above another. We don't put one person below another either. But that we are all equal as all one body in Jesus Christ, all united to follow Christ. So what if, what if we gave up the dream church? What if we stopped trying to find fault with our Christian communities that we go to? And maybe that's you, maybe you're church hopping today, whether you're in person or online, maybe you're trying to go from church to church and you're asking yourself, well, there's just not enough people at this service or this just doesn't have my demographic that I want, this, they don't have the missions that I'm looking for, they don't have the money that I hope that they had or the programs that I wish that they had or X, Y, and Z that I wish they had. It's as if we treat the church like we treat people which we can't do either one of as Christians. We can't treat people in the church the same. We can't treat them in that way at all as preferences, as pick and choose one over the other. It's an all or in, an all or nothing kind of situation. We have to be all in, we have to be all for it. What if we stop trying to find fault with our Christian community and instead embrace the discomfort in order to know God and be known by his people, we must reject the consumeristic church hunting mindset, lay our preferences down, enter into the awkwardness and die to our own desires just like Jesus did. And we'll dig into Jesus's example next week, but today we need to some confession time as we approach the table of Holy Communion. We need to tell God this morning that we give up the idea that we need a community to worship him, but rather we need to embrace the idea of something different, that we will be a place together that he can come and live. And it's my hope and prayer that this place, University United Methodist Church, would be an awkward Christian settlement for each of us to move into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ and one another. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? God, we confess that we hold certain standards over another, that we hold certain mindsets over another, that we hold certain people over another, but God, you have challenged us today to remind ourselves that we are called to agape love all people and how difficult that truly is. But God, if you can do it, certainly so can we because you say in your word that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so we ask that you strengthen us here and now as we approach your table of grace, as we approach a table of unity and diversity and change. We ask this Christ, in your name we pray, amen. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high 
high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living. What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Alleluia, praise the one who set me free. Alleluia, death has lost its grip on me. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Alleluia, praise the one who set me free. Alleluia, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, alleluia. Praise the one who set me free. Alleluia. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Alleluia, praise the one who set me free. Alleluia, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, oh God, you are my living hope, my, you are my living hope. Jesus Christ is our living hope, and we come to him today with great deal of hope in our hearts for a renewal and regeneration of our spirits, 
for a reconciliation and peace with justice in the world, for each of us to come as one body in Christ because the body of Christ is broken for each and every one of us. Would you pray with me? God, I know that some of us today are struggling with somebody in our lives. Maybe it's a spouse, a friend, a family member, a loved one, a neighbor, a coworker, a boss, whatever and whoever it might be, God. We all have someone in our life who we treat differently. Maybe it's the homeless person down the street. Maybe it's the people who look differently from us and act differently from us in so many ways. Whatever it is, God, we ask that you forgive us for cre creating difference where you have created diversity for creating angst where you have created peace. And God, we ask that we come to the table today <clears throat> with all of our imperfections. God, I certainly know that I don't have all things in my life together. And I know someone somewhere out here doesn't either. At least one. And yet, God, we can come to our, this table. Not because we have our lives together, not because we have our faith together, not because we have our spirits together, but because we are broken and bruised and battered, confused and imperfect. We bring it to you. We bring it all to you, Jesus. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, so that we might be the body of Christ, broken and shed into the world. I ask this blessing and I consecrate these gifts in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we'll take communion today by intinction. If you're uncomfortable with intinction, we have uh, pre-factory sealed cups with uh, juice and a wafer that you can partake in here at the altar rail. You're welcome to pray at the altar rail for as long as you wish, as long as you like, or at your pews, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, I will give you the, the bread, Pastor Vaughn will give you the juice, and you're welcome to, to come as the Spirit leads you as the ushers dismiss us. Let us come to the table together, full of God's wonder and mystery today.
days I've been in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Friends, as we leave this place, may you go forth to sing about the goodness of God. May you go forth as one body in Christ, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we go forth to share the good news into the world. May you go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May you go in peace. We'll see you next Sunday. Go in grace. Amen. <laughs>